Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture we're going to look at implicit differentiation. Now, what exactly is this? Well, the idea is as follows. Right now, we're able to solve problems such as, here's the graph of a function, and let's say function is f, so that's the graph of y equals f of x, and we've got a point on it. What's the tangent line to the curve at that point? Well, in order to find the tangent line, we just need to know the tangent slope. And to find the tangent slope, we know that it's just going to be the derivative of the function at the point A. So maybe that x-coordinate at that point is A. So we're able to solve this problem, where the curve that we're interested in is the graph of a function. What if the curve we're interested in is not the graph of a function? In other words, what if we're looking at, say, a curve which is the graph of an equation? So it's the set of all points which satisfy an equation. How do we solve the tangent line problem in this case? And that's what this section's about. Taking our ideas that we've developed for graphs of functions and trying to expand them to deal with the case where the curve is the graph of an equation. So in this particular problem, we've got a curve, which I've sketched the graph down below. And it's known as the folium of Descartes. We want to find the equation of the tangent line at this particular point. So it's at 3 halves, 3 halves. So at that particular point there. And we're interested in finding the tangent line. So what is the tangent line there? So the problem with this is, this curve is not the graph of a function. So notice that y is not expressible as a single function of x. We can't write y as a function of x because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Or in other words, because for multiple, well, for a single value of x, there can be multiple corresponding values of y. And in order for y to be a function of x, for one x value, there can be at most one y value, namely the function value. But here we see that there are some x values where we get up to three values of y coming out. So it's not a function of x. y is not expressible as a single function of x. So how do we deal with this problem? Well, the idea is to think of it as follows. To say, well, OK, so this curve is not the graph of a single function. But we can think of it as being a few different functions stuck together. So we can think of the curve as the graph of three functions. We'd have y is some function of x, and perhaps it's some other function of x. And finally, we can write it as some third function of x. So what I mean by this is, let's take our graph and we'll split it up. So maybe this is our first piece here. So it consists of this portion that's coming in to the origin, and then the portion that goes away on the bottom half of the origin. Now that's the graph of a function. It passes the vertical line test. For one x value, there's at most one y value. We can also have another function describing another piece of it. And another function describing another piece of it. And so that's what I mean by we can think of the curve as being made up of three functions. Now, these three functions all have the property have the property that they solve the original equation. They're solutions to the original equation. The, so that x cubed plus f of x cubed equals 3x times f of x. 
and x cubed plus g of x cubed equals 3x g of x and x cubed plus h of x all cubed equals 3 of x h of x. So they all have the property that they are solutions to the original equation. In other words, these three expressions hold true. These are all these three equations are true. Okay, so this is the idea. We kind of want to think of okay, we, we can't get a single function which describes y as a function of x, but perhaps we can use more than a fun one more than one function. Perhaps in this case we'll need three functions to describe y in terms of x. So that for any given x value, we can work out three corresponding y values just by plugging in each of those three functions. Now some of these functions will have restricted domains. For example, if I plugged an x value of 2 into the function g, well I look over here and see for 2, oh it's not in the domain of the function g. So the g function wouldn't return a value for 2, the h function wouldn't return a value for 2, the only function that would return a value would be the f function and that would return some value that's down here. And that would return that value down there. Okay, so we've got these three different functions which together make up the graph of the curve. These are called the solution functions to the curve, or in other words, we're going to call them the functions that are implicitly defined by the curve. So let's go on to that definition. Implicitly defined functions. So we have an equation in two variables, x and y. It may have one or more solutions for y in terms of x, or for x in terms of y, we just looked at the um, y in terms of x case. These solutions are functions that are said to be implicitly defined by the equation. So let's look at a couple more examples here. Here's a, an equation, x squared plus y squared equals 1. The graph of this equation, of course, is the circle of radius 1 also known as the unit circle, circle of radius 1. There isn't a single function uh, which we can write y in terms of x, but however we can split this up into a couple of different functions. We can look at the upper portion of the unit circle, and we can look at the lower portion of the unit circle. And for each of these pieces, we can write y as a function of x. This will be y is the square root of 1 minus x squared, and this would be y is equal to negative the square root of 1 minus x squared. We get those two expressions just by solving the original equation for y in terms of x. These are what we're calling the implicitly defined functions. So for example, if I wanted to know the tangent line at a particular point on, on the circle, what I could do is I could say, well, which piece does it lie on? Is it on the upper semicircle or the lower one? And then use the corresponding function that gives that piece of the original curve and work out the derivative and et cetera. And so do the normal thing we do. What about the next example? So here we've got our folium. And we've already talked about this on the previous slide. And that is, we can think of this as being made up of three different functions. So there's this equation implicitly defines three different functions. And you know it doesn't really matter how you choose the three. You just want to make sure each one of them is a function. Each one of them passes the vertical line test. So you know, I'll choose this one for the first one, and then for the second one, I'll choose the lower half of the loop, and then for the third one, I'll choose the upper half of the loop. And these are the three implicitly defined functions. from the equation. So these are the ones that are implicitly defined from this equation, from the folium. Okay, so the problem is here, though, 
if I want to find the equation of the tangent line at a point on the given curve, I could say, well, which piece does it lie on? And then go ahead and try to use the function which describes that piece. The problem is, it is very difficult to get expressions for these three functions. In some cases, for some curves, it might be impossible to find an expression for the function which describes that piece of the curve. So in practice, this is not a good way to solve the problem by splitting it up into individual functions and then working with the function that the corresponding value lies on. For the circle, it's not too bad. We can either work with the upper semicircle or the lower semicircle, and they aren't too difficult to find and work with in terms of their derivatives. So that should be all right. However, for curves like the full of Descartes, it turns out to be a real problem to try to get these three expressions and then figure out one to work with, which one to work with. So the idea in this section is we want to come up with a better method for finding slopes of tangent lines to curves where the curves are given by equations and not a single function. How do we do that? Well, we'd like to work with the original curve itself. And the idea is really presented here is that no matter which function you use, they all have the same property. They have to satisfy the same equation. They have to satisfy the original equation. So let's try to just work with the original equation. And we're going to just differentiate through the original equation. This is the idea of implicit differentiation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the original equation and we're just going to use the chain rule to differentiate both sides of the given equation where we're just thinking of x as the independent variable. Then we're going to solve the resulting equation for dy by dx. So let's see this in action. So there's our original equation. And we're going to differentiate through it. So what that means is we're going to differentiate both sides in terms of x. Now when we do this derivative, we just have to think to ourselves, everywhere we see a y, just think. It's some function of x. Right, we'll skip back to the previous slide again. Everywhere we see a y, we're thinking of it as, well, it's just some function of x and some function of x. It could be one of many different functions, but it's just some function of x. So we know how to differentiate things like that. So let's see how would we do it. Well, I want to differentiate the sum of these two functions, so I'm going to differentiate the first one. That would be a 3x squared. Now I want to differentiate the second one. How do I differentiate that? Well, it's something, square, uh, something cubed. So it's some function inside, cubed. I can use the chain rule. So I'm going to differentiate the outside function. And we're still evaluating it at the inside. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So that's dy dx. And then we go on. What's the derivative of 3xy? So the constant can come out. It's the derivative of the product of these two functions, x and y. The derivative of the first one, x, with respect to x, is just 1. So it's 1 times the second function, y, plus the first function, x, times the derivative of the second function. The second function is y. It's some function of x. I don't know what it is. So its derivative we write as dy by dx. And now we've got an equation expressed entirely in terms of x, y, and the derivative of y with respect to x. This is what we want to find. So we want to solve for this. Now we're in just the realm of algebra. We've got an equation with a bunch of different variables. Let's just solve for the variable we want to find. And so I'm going to move everything involving dy by dx to one side of the equation. So that's going to be our 3y squared. And then we've got a 3x that moves over. That's negative 3x. And then we've got the 3y on this side. And then we move the 3x over as a or sorry, 3x squared over to the right as a negative 3x squared. Remember, this is multiplication. We're staring at 
the derivative of y with respect to x times this expression here. So I can divide both sides by that expression. And everything has a factor of 3 in it, so we can cancel that off. And we get y minus x squared all over y squared minus x. And so there's our derivative. What's neat about this is this is the derivative at any point on the curve. Right? So we had our curve. Let's sketch it out here. And so if we pick any point, uh, I sort of missed the origin with it, so I'll thicken up the axis so you can't really tell I missed the origin. There we go. So at any point on the curve, we just look at the corresponding xy value of that point. It's going to depend on both x and y because a single x value is not enough to determine the point in question because for a single x value you could have at most three different y values. So you need both an x and a y value to describe a point on this curve. Once you know that point, once you have the x and y value, you just plug it into the expression and get the derivative. So let's have a look at this point up here. 3 halves, 3 halves. What's the slope of the tangent there? What's its derivative? So dy by dx, uh, I'm going to use our notation for evaluated at. So let's scroll up here. Evaluated at 3 halves, 3 halves. And so that's going to be 3 halves minus 3 halves squared all over 3 halves squared minus 3 halves. You'll see that the top and the bottom expressions are exactly the same, except one's uh, negative the other, so this turns out to be a value of negative 1. So that's the slope of the tangent line. So what is the equation of the tangent line? Well, it's y minus the y-coordinate of the point you know is equal to the slope times x minus the x-coordinate of the point you know. Or in other words, y is equal to negative x plus 3 halves move the other 3 halves over as a plus 3 halves, so 3 halves plus 3 halves is 3, and there is the equation of our tangent line. So there's our tangent line, and the equation is y is equal to negative x plus 3. Okay, so that's the idea with implicit differentiation. You've got a curve, which is given by an equation, and you want to find the slope of the tangent line at some given point on this curve. The idea is to just work with the equation of the curve. Don't bother trying to fiddle around with solving y as a single function of x because it, it may take more than one function. Forget all that. Just focus on the equation itself, which relates x and y. Differentiate both sides. Solve for dy by dx, which is the derivative. It'll probably be expressed in terms of both x and y. Because to identify a point on a curve, especially when it loops back on itself, you need both its x and y coordinates. x is not enough to uniquely define the point anymore. Once you know the derivative in terms of x and y, just pop the values of x and y in, you get your slope, and then you can find the corresponding tangent line through our usual methods of you've got a slope, you know a point, and so you can find the line.